Oh, hi there. You just caught me looking for a PC case. My current PC's upgradability is uh, very limited. But what you could do though is uh, transplant the parts in it onto a different case. And with the thing that's happening on the outside world, uh, we might as well. All right, so what we have here are pretty cheap offerings in the grand scheme of PC cases, but uh, I'm not really feeling them. They kind of look tacky. I mean, I understand the motifs of some of them, like some of them are just screaming, game, fruit nerd. But, uh, uh, well, well, if you're a big fan of Bauhaus, then this case might be for you. Um, there are other colors as well. Why? Just, why? Like, who thought it was a good idea to mix in McDonald's yellow with blue? If you like the color scheme, good for you? Uh, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm gone. Let's just look for a decent case. Me from NZXT. Oh, well, here we go. At least we have a nice break from those Transformers looking cases. So, this is the NZXT H500. And, uh, well, I love the design of it. It's very clean and minimalistic. Well, let me show you one of my favorite cases actually. It's the Corsair Crystal 280X. And what I love about this is that the power supply is positioned behind the motherboard. And it's a clean design. You know, not something that you see that often in other PC cases. Normally you have the power supply either at the top or at the bottom, but not behind the motherboard. And so you have this really cute compact design. I mean, I don't care about the RGB, but hey, let's have a look from thermal take. <laughs> oh, lovely, the first result, the Core P3. Now, I don't know how you feel about this, but this is easily my most favorite case. Besides being so modular that you could use it as an open test bench, it just showcases everything beautiful about PCs and PC building. I want it. I want it! <laughs> oh. Gosh damn. However, I have spent this amount of money on uh, woodworking tools. Here's the plan. We have a basic illustration of the Core P3. It's designed with water cooling in mind, which leaves this empty space if you're using an air cooler. So let's slice that part off. I also love the way the Corsair 280X houses the power supply behind the motherboard. So by designing that on our case, we can remove this unused space as well. This leaves us with something that measures 300 millimeters in length and height. That's 12 inches. Anyways, let's make it. The material I'll be using is one I'm very familiar with, laminated floorboard. It's basically HDF with a super hard layer. The width of this box depends on the width of the power supply. This one is 65 millimeters. Add in 20 mil, and we have the right size to cut the sides of this box. These are then cut 300 mil using this jig so that they're consistent. For the front and back, these two floorboards are glued together, then cut to size. The corners of this box are going to be mitered using a chamfer bit, and the front and back will be lapped by using a straight cutter bit. Excellent, we have this basic looking box on its way to being a PC case. Okay, let's take care of the power supply. Not only they need to be screwed in place, but also uh, they need a cutout for ventilation. So I've marked and drilled the mounting holes and used this jigsaw for the cutout. The edges can be cleaned through the power of routing. I love it.
And it fits. Lovely. Except that I did a Linus on this power supply. It's now full of scratches. Perhaps the most second difficult thing to do is the front panel I.O. I have this reset switch and cheapy front panel to use, and taking time to mark them out, I've gone and drilled and routed, routed them accordingly. Not really knowing how they'll be fitted in, but hey, I'll eventually figure it out. While we're at it, let's mark out where the motherboard standoffs will be, and also these long standoffs for our clay panel. Using the pillar drill is the best way of preventing drunk threads. Just turn the tap by hand while keeping a light pressure, and once you've got a thread going, just do the rest on a table. With a 2.5mm hole, these motherboard standoffs can be screwed right into the material, no tapping necessary. As with woods, be careful not to over tighten anything, as that will destroy the threads. Next is the holes for all the connectors, such as the ATX24 pin, CPU4 pin, SATA data, and front panel I.O. After marking, I've drilled 6.5mm holes, then routed long channels for most of them, otherwise they won't fit through. These will sure help with cable management by hiding nearly all of it in the compartment. As ever, a bit of chamfering goes a real long way. I then realised that the PSU will block some of the front USB connectors, so I've made a channel deep enough for them to fit through. It's just that building in this case will be more finicky. We'll need little channels so that the PCI slot brackets can fit in this case. Pretty much the spacing on these slot brackets are standardized, and removing this off my graphics card to help with marking, I've routed the channels with a 3mm straight bit. But that means we run into the most difficult thing of building a PC case, finding a way to hold your graphics card. Open test benches have either a stamped steel frame or long screws for your things PCI related, but I couldn't find these standalone, so I made my own. If you have found these, please leave a comment, I'd love to know. Anyways, I fashioned my PCI slot bracket frame thing out of floorboard. While they're excellent for machining processes, they have a tendency of sagging over time, so I might make a beefier one, or use a different material. Well, it looks decent. I decided to make one this wide in case I happen to use anything else with the graphics card installed, but I doubt that. <sighs> we can finally glue everything together. Frame clamps and PVA glue are your best friends in these kinds of large projects. All sides are glued in except the rear, which will be removable for us to access the PSU and the cables and stuff. To prevent from that side from sticking, I removed as much glue off the edges in that side as possible. Okay, then check all the sides, wipe off the excess glue, and leave it to dry. I've also glued in the PCI slot bracket frame thing, not knowing it was a tad too low. I'll need to sort that out later.
A word of warning, don't use power tools near PC components, especially if it's gonna spray out metal bits. Anyways, a 2.5mm hole is drilled and with an M3 bolt, the PCI slot bracket frame thing is complete. Except that the HDMI cable couldn't fit in because, again, the frame was in the way. So, I did some filing. The power supply needs an intake, so I've measured the fan dimensions, cut the area out with a jigsaw and routed it into shape, with a touch of chamfering. I've cut this fine mesh to size and stuck it in with double-sided tape. This will help with dust filtration as well as looking pretty fine. Lastly, the acrylic panel. It's 5mm thick and is clear. Four 10mm holes are drilled and the edges are slightly cleaned with a steel rule. Okay, it's been a few days and I feel lazy. Here we have a plastic L trim to hold in the hard drive. I've cut a pair to length, marked out the holes yet again and determined the best place to screw it into the case. Yet again, don't drill things near PC components. Just don't do what I'm doing here. Just like the motherboard standoffs though, no tapping is necessary. Finally, we can start assembly of our PC. Let's get to the front panel I.O. I've used super glue for the power switch, which might bite me in the future. And these are the front USB cables, which without that channel would be obstructed by the power supply. And after a bit more fiddling with the front panel, it fits in perfectly. If only my sigh of relief was recorded. This little piece will hold in the board and will be screwed in place. As you could see here, there's loads of cable management space in this case, but with no channels, velcro straps do a good job in holding them in. And with the finishing touch, the rubber feet. And here it is, the Thermaltake Core P3 slash Corsair Crystal 280X case. We have our PC and it's running as expected. I haven't talked about the parts in it though, so let's do that. Most of it came from my Dell Vostro, but I'll list the components as if you could buy them uh, separately. The motherboard is an MIH61R, an unremarkable but cheap OEM board found between 15 and 20 pounds. What I like about these though are that nearly all of their connectors are standard, the only proprietary one being the power switch. The CPU is an Intel Core i3-2120, very common in these systems, 
and for its price, it's a decent choice for an ultra budget build. It's got two cores and four threads, clocked at 3.3 gigahertz. And I also upgraded the RAM from 4 gigabytes to 8 with these Corsair basic sticks. The CPU cooler on the Dell is uh, lacking to say the least. A cheap Alcasa cooler is not only beefier but looks a lot less OEM. This has an aluminium core, though we're using an i3 here, let's be realistic. This is a Sapphire R7-260X, almost 750Ti performance for a fraction of the cost. Unfortunately, this is the weaker 1GB version which isn't enough in 2020, though at around £20 it isn't too bad for our build. Now, the power supply. I'm gonna say this yet again. Never cheap out on your power supply. I have this FSP unit with a 6 pin soldered on for, wait for it, £7. Please don't spend this little on one. This was before I found that Corsair and sometimes EVGA PSUs go for around 25 on eBay, so go for them instead. And another thing, this unit is rated at 300 watts, and the system requirements with this graphics card are uh, 350. Make sure your PSU can deliver enough power, because asking for more will stress it so much that it'll just blow up and take other parts with it, because that can happen. So that's a mistake on my part, and if it does blow up, I'll definitely post an update video. Now, what are the problems with this case, if it's something you can buy? Well, the power supply does block some of the front panel cables. Having it higher would have solved that. In addition, the box is so shallow that without the acrylic panel for support, it'll tip over. If I designed the case around a full-size ATX power supply, like in the Corsair 280X, it would be much more stable. Lastly, I'm not entirely happy with the PCI slot frame thing. If there was a standalone part uh, from those open test benches that I could buy, I would have gotten one of those. Nevertheless, I'm overall happy with how the case turned out. It's a mix of the two of my favorite PC cases, and it's something unique that didn't cost me too much money. It's pretty much what I wanted all along. And that's about it. This is the budding engineer. Thanks for watching. See you soon.